Hi guys, this is Keith Galley, and in this video we will be going over one of the basic sorting algorithms, insertion sort. The goal of any sorting algorithm is to take a list such as 524613 and put it in increasing order. Insertion sort does this by going through a series of iterations. On each iteration we take a bigger and bigger sublist and make sure that is sorted by swapping back any value that is not in place. So on the first iteration we look at just 5. That's just a single number so it's sorted. Next we look at 5 and 2. Um, 2 is comes before 5 so we would swap that 2 back. Now we would have a sorted 2, 5 and we look at 4. So if this was 2, 5, 4 now well, the 4 would need to be swapped in between the 2 and the 5. I'll uh, write this out a little bit more explicitly. So, on the first iteration, we just look at 5. And 5 is a single number, so it's sorted. Second iteration, we look at 5 and 2. Well, 2 becomes before 5, so we should swap the order of these two things to become 2, 5. All right, now let's go to the third iteration. So we have the list 2, 5, 4 here, and we're on iteration 3. So in this case, we have, we're looking at the sublist 2, 5, 4. And only because the first two are already sorted, we're just going to have to figure out how many times to swap back four. Well, four is larger than two and smaller than five, so we can you know, just swap it uh, right back one time. So it just takes the place of the five. So it goes two, four, five. And we'll uh, put this in our main array here. All right, and this process just keeps repeating. So now we look at six on iteration four. Well, 6 is bigger than 5, so it's in the correct spot. So, 2, f oh, oops. So, 2, 4, 5, 6, nothing changes. So now let's look at this 1. This 1 is smaller than anything we've seen before, and we have our first four numbers already sorted. So we have 2, 4, 5, 6, 1. Well, you're going to have to swap this. Then we're going to have to swap again. Then we're going to have to swap again. And then we're going to have to swap again. So we're going to have to do four swaps. So we keep swapping this back until we find a number that is smaller than one. Or if one's the smallest number, we just swap it all the way to the front of the list. So this will become one, two, four, five, six. All right, so we can update our chart to show this. So we now have 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. Finally, on the last iteration, iteration 6, we are looking at the whole array. So we're looking at 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 3. Uh, in this case, we're going to have to swap the 3 right here. So we're going to have to swap it one, two, three times. So one, two, three times and get it to be before this four. So at the end of that, four, five, six. So after six iterations, we have all of our numbers sorted in increasing order. Let's quickly go over the runtime of this algorithm. Well, in the example I showed, we had six numbers in our array, and we were required to go through six iterations of the algorithm. Let's imagine we didn't just have six, but we had an arbitrarily long uh, array, and let's call this size of this array n. So we know we would need O of n iterations to get through this uh, algorithm. And then to complete our runtime analysis, we need to count how many times we had to swap back numbers. Well, in the worst case, we would have a array that is 
sorted in decreasing order. So in each each time we see a new number, we'd have to swap it back uh, to the front of the list. So in this last number, we'd have to swap it all the way back down the line, so n times. So we know that the max amount of swaps is n. So we can bound everything on the swap hand by n. So we have an O of n times O of n, so this gives us a total runtime of O of n squared. The space requirements for this algorithm, we don't need any extra space. We maybe just need a couple temporary variables, but we can bound the space by O of n. We'll finish this video by quickly going through the pseudocode for insertion sort. So let's begin by defining our function insertion sort. And insertion sort is going to take in a list of numbers and we'll just call these nums for short. So the goal of this algorithm is to return this list nums in sorted order. So we'll begin by iterating through the n values we have in our array. So to do this we'd go for i in range 1 to the length of the numbers. So that gives us the n value that we're looking for. We're going to want to do we're going to want to swap back. And so we start at 1 here. So this is 1. We start at 1 right here because we never need to solely just look at this 6 because it's already sorted. We're going to have to look at these first two numbers though. So we'll start right here and just figure out if we need to swap that before the 6 or not. Alright, so once we do that, I'm going to just have a variable that I define as current value. And that will start off by being just the value at the ith index in numbers. So nums, ith index. Then we'll also have a position variable, and that will just be i. So now we want to swap back. So if we said we we're at this 4 right here, we'd want to swap it back until it is in the correct position in the array. So how do we do that in code? So what we can do is while position is greater than zero so basically just meaning that we don't need to swap back once we're here if we're here you know it's already at the first spot so it's in sorted order uh, sorted order it's the smallest value so we'll end right here while position is greater than zero and the value right before it so nums position minus one is greater than the current value we want to swap it back so what we can do to swap it back is we can just say nums position is equal to nums position minus one and then we just want to decrease our position pointer so that if we need to swap back again, we're swapping back from the correct spot. So position equals position minus one. Then finally, we want to update our current value to be in the final resting spot. So that will be nums. This is outside the while loop because we're done swapping nums position equals the current value. Okay, so just to go over the pseudocode and look at one iteration, let's imagine that we were at index value i, uh, index value of three. So we get the current value at position three, which is two, and we're just say, storing position in i, or as i, so three. So i is equal to 3 right now. So while position is greater than 0, and the numbers of position minus 1 is greater than current value, so 
position minus one is three minus one, so that equals two. So that value there is four. And that is greater than our current value of two. So we would swap those two values. So we would go, we would change it so it's two and then four. And then we check again to see if three is greater than two, which it is. So then we, after we've decremented this position, we'd be looking at position two, or position one versus position two, and see that, um, that they get swapped. So we kind of end with three here. And then finally, numbers of position. So because we're decrementing this each time, we get a final position of one. So this is the zeroth index and this is the first index. And we get we just put our current value there. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, and it works. Cool. Thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have recommendations for future videos, let me know.